And this is the purpose of this. What should I look for? This is simple, but you know that for autism, there's a spectrum. So how can we explain the spectrum? You're starting to get a feel for the complexity of what's going on. But we're talking about new age autism. And, and new age autism, we believe this is due to functional vitamin B2 deficiency, which is sitting on top of this functional B12 efficiency. So what are the consequences of this? What can we see as far as symptoms or whatever in the children? And what does this mean for them? There's some really, really nasty statistics. 50% of mothers to, in Boston maternity uh, wards have less than the recommended daily intake of iodine. This is in a highly educated city in the US. And 50% of the mothers, this is in the goiter belt. This is an area where iodine deficiency was identified 100 years ago to the year. Yet here we are 100 years later and 50% of the mothers have less than the recommended daily allowance of iodine. 30% of the kids have iodine deficiency. Now, this figure is mirrored in Australia as well. So the Australian Thyroid, I've been talking to the Australian Thyroid Association and they are saying the same thing. And it's the single most preventable cause of development delay. It's been known for over 100 years. And here we are. What have we learned? Nothing. So that's one. So that's an old one. There's a new one coming on the block. It's selenium deficiency. The soils are getting very old. We're using up our selenium. And what I find from the hair metals test analysis is 46% of the kids are selenium deficient. And molybdenum deficiency is massive in the US now. The mining of molybdenum has been decreasing for the last five years. So the amount of molybdenum in the soil is also decreasing. And 75% of the kids that I have are molybdenum deficient. So we have three mineral deficiencies here, and all of them contribute to functional vitamin B2 deficiency. And this is what I believe is new age autism. So functional B2 deficiency, what causes that? What does it mean? So these three metals are involved of the conversion of vitamin B2 to, to one of the active analogs of vitamin B2, which is FAD. Two of the B2 de um, derivatives are required for B12 cycling. So if you're deficient in these, then the B12 can't cycle, so you'll have functional B12 deficiency. In addition, B2 is required for burning a fat for energy. And one of the markers that you see in the organic acids test, you see these fatty acid markers go up and up and up, and some of them are quite extreme. It's required for burning a sugar for energy. And one of the markers you look at in organic acid is lactic acid. And this can go up and up and up and up, which we see. It's required for burning of glycogenic amino acids. So if you can't burn fat or sugar for energy, you burn amino acids. It's required for processing of oxalate. And one of the common things that people see in children with developmental delays, elevated oxalates. And there's a scare about whether oxalates are causing or not, but it's a consequence of the B2 deficiency. It's used in the electron transport chain. So here we have, again, it's used in, in conveying energy down the transport chain. So if, you, if this is deficient, then you can eat as much as you like, eat a lot of fat, you can't convert it, eat a lot of sugar, you can't convert it, eat a lot of protein, you can't convert it, but that which you can convert, you lose on the electron transport chain. So you, now you have a child who seems to be eating a lot, if you can get a child who eats a lot, because often they don't, but then they're not getting any energy. And so obesity is a problem later on for some of the kids. They get big. Uh, it's also required for iron processing. And what I've noticed is that talking to, and this is where you need to talk to the mothers, what's the child eating? Why is the child iron deficient? Why is it B12 deficient? You can find that sometimes that they're eating a lot of red meat, but they're still iron deficient. And that's because B2 as FAD and B12 are both required for iron processing in the gut. So if you don't have this, then you can eat all the iron you want to, but you can't transport it and you can't use it inside the cell. It's also required for vitamin B6 activation. Possibly not that well known, but it's fairly obvious. So because of these deficiencies, you get massive energy loss and you get typical underweight babies. And so this is a thing when you look at a lot of the babies that are in the lower quartile of weights. They're skinny little things, no tone. It's not all of them, but premier babies tend to be un underweight as well. I'm moving to something else that you know happens in the kids. 
And a lot of the kids, temper control is an issue. <laughs> and one of the ways we control temper and we control movement is with a transmitter called GABA. So it's an inhibitory transmitter. Now, GABA is involved. So GABA, you require an active form of B2, which is FMN, which then makes this active form of pyridoxal or vitamin B6. You get lower GABA, you get poor emotional control, you get poor fine motor control, and you get epilepsy. So epilepsy is one of the things that's very common in these children. And so why is it? So here we have controls here and here. They've got pyridyl foxate, phosphate in the controls, but they don't have the active form in autism. They have this pyridyl foxate, phosphate is involved in an enzyme that converts glutamate to GABA. So if you don't have it, the glutamate precursor is elevated and elevated glutamate is known in children with development of play and reduced production of GABA. So now you have a child who gets out of control. They can't turn it off because they're not making GABA. They have fine motor school, lack of control, because they can't, if they're doing something too rapidly, they can't damp it down. They can't control it. So this is another aspect of you treat of vitamin B2 deficiency causing another range of symptoms in the spectrum. And curiously, when I did the SNP analysis of this, the genetic analysis, this, one of the things that did come up more often in children with autism was increased mutations in the enzyme GAD. And the enzyme GAD is this one that does this. So it was curious that it was there, and it's only in autism, it's not in chronic fatigue, it's not in MMS, and it's not in the control population, but there were actually more of these kids who had mutations. So it's the only genetic marker that I've really been able to find that can explain some of the behaviour. So that's a behavioural issue. So this would help you to work out, ah, oh, perhaps this is an issue. Now, how would I know this, or what would be something that tells me to look for this. So when I go to the doctor and the doctor gives me an enhancer of GABA, and if you look at it, that's what a lot of the kids are on. They're on GABA agonists. So that to me tells me the kid ain't making enough GABA. So we're gonna give it some more. Well, why not fix this deficiency? Why not make the child do this? Why feed them a drug when you can just fix the nutrition deficiency? So there's a high incidence of epilepsy and autism. And treatment of all epilepsy involves GABA agonists, which is what I'm talking about. So in functional B2 deficiency, there will be the B6 deficiency, and that will result, uh, result in GABA insufficiency. And as I said, there's a high percentage of GABA mutations in CNAs. So here's a ref on it. The other thing that B2 is involved in, which maybe it's less than 1% of the general population knows, and seems to be even less than that of the medical profession knows, is that vitamin B2 is essential for making this analyte, B6, and it's in, essential for making FAD, which is here, and it's even essential for making FMN and FAD. So if these two are deficient, you can't get this cycle that's going on. This is part of the methylation cycle, renewal of methylation cycle. So this gets blocked, and uh, a lot of people will have had MTHFR mutations and jump up and down because a child's got MTHFR. We've all got MTHFR. It's whether we have enough B2 to make the thing run, which is it. And if you don't, then what happens is when you get this methyl group and you transfer the methyl group to homocysteine, you make methionine. Methionine goes on to make SAM, which we said is really important for production of melatonin, adrenaline, creatine, if this isn't cycling, this is reduced. And so the methylation part, uh, pathway depends upon FAD and the active form of B6 and methylfolate. And these are standard things that the kids are treated with, but this is why. The other thing that happens is if you don't have your methylfolate and you make this cobalt one, this is sort of an active form of thing, the methyls groups left, it's gone over here. And that, when it sits around, comes oxidized and you make this inactive form 
of B12, cobalt 2B12. But if you're B2 deficient, you can regenerate this to make it. The problem is the kids are not B2 deficient. So what happens, sufficient, sorry. So what happens is that this builds up. And this is what is seen in serum. You have this paradoxical B12 deficiency. The levels of B12 in serum are very high, but it's inactive. And this is what I believe is the form of B12 that's in serum. And it comes from this functional B2 deficiency. So this is new age autism. This is autism where B12 looks good, when we actually go and do the metabolic analysis, we see it's not active. This is part of this is part of the process that goes. On. So B2 is essential for this cycle. This, this is the FAD here. It's also essential for processing. We said glycolysis gets to pyruvate, pyruvate is then converted and it goes in the electron transport chain. This won't happen unless you've got B2. So this last enzyme here requires B2 and B1, and I think all of amide. And so if this is not here, that's not made. Or this, it goes to lactate. So it's not converted to lose energy. So B2 is involved in processing. So here are just some graphs to show the same thing. It's involved in metabolism of fats. So here we have a whole bunch of little markers that are in organic acids, in the control the levels are low. And in the, the children with... Uh, Autism, you see they're much, much higher. There's a block. These things are accumulating. They're not being digested. So this is lack of energy. Here's lactose, which is the bottom lactic acid, um, which is lactate, sorry, there, um, which is the bottom of the, citric, of the glycolysis. And a lot of them are put on B1 deficient diets and pyruvate goes up. It's terrible. It's all there in the oak. You just got to look at it. And here's the electron transport chain, and here's the enzymes that require FME and FAD. So if these are deficient, you can see energy transfers don't work. And one of the ways you see that is they've got very elevated succinate, which occurs in the organic acids test. So it's a way of monitoring what's going on. And this seems to be related to the FME. So it's another marker for B2.